platform. My name is Aisha Yusufu. I am an active Nigerian citizen. I don't see myself as an activist. I just see myself as a citizen who got tired of just looking the other way and just minding her business. And when I turned 40, I realized that I had become the problem of Nigeria. How did I become the problem of Nigeria? It's by my silence. And I realized that I was failing other young people who were in the same kind of position that I was in and I decided that I will, I will, I will start speaking on national issues and uh, four months after Chibo girls were abducted and I started I joined the campaign for the release of Chibo girls which up to now it's seven years and we still have a uh, hundred and seven uh, Chibo girls are still in, in captivity. And when the Chibo girls abduction happened, I came out. I came out as a mother. But a few weeks into the uh, into the campaign for the release of our Chibo girls, I realized that I was no longer there because I was a mother. I was there because I was the Chibo girl at that time, 21 years ago. I shared a lot in common with the Chibok girls. If I give up on them, that would be that I also gave up on the little girl that I was. Last year, I was part of those who, who made demands for uh, police brutality uh, to be stopped in my uh, country, part of uh, NSAS protesters. And I remember standing there and, uh, you know, the police daring them and telling them that if you're going to shoot the youth, you have to go through me. It wasn't fun waiting and expecting that, oh, they, they, they can actually shoot. And even when they threw the first uh, canister of tear gas and everybody ran away, and I refused to run away, and I started walking backward, my eyes were streaming, my hands were up there, my the fist was high up there. All I could say to God was that, God, please ensure that the, the bullet that enters through my body goes through my heart. If God gives me 40 more years, I'm going to devote it to Nigeria. And that's absolutely what I'm doing. I'm fighting for the unborn Nigeria, just the way I wish others had fought for me before I was born. And in that way, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't have to fight the fight that I'm fighting today, which is just merely for survivor. <music> Doing the Bring Back Our Girls movement, sort of like, changed my life forever in the sense that it brought back all the pains that I have kept hidden. I was born and brought up in the northern part of the country where girls weren't supposed to go to school. My friends got married at the age of 11. By 11, I had no girlfriends. And I know that if, my, if I was taken away when I was writing that same exam that Chibok girls were writing in 1991, my parents would never have been able to say anything because they are poor. And in Nigeria, when you're poor, you're faceless, nameless, and voiceless. You're not seen as a human. In 2014, one of the Chibok fathers said to us that government used to find them for not sending their children to school. And that now that they, are, they have sent their children to school and their children have been taken away, who is going to find government? When you take away the child of the poor, you're not just taking away a child, you're taking away a generation, everything. Because the poor do not have investments in properties and all of that. All of their investments are in their children. See, I grew up being degraded. I grew up being seen as not as a human being because of the fact that I grew up in the poor section of, 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 of the of town. Today in my country, access to good quality education is dependent on the economic status of one's family. That's the greatest injustice as far as I'm concerned. Because without education, I wouldn't even be here speaking. Education is the leveler. I want everybody to be seen as an equal in my country. And that's the reason why I always say that no Nigerian is more Nigerian than any Nigerian. And that the, the apparatus of government should be, should be available for everyone, whether you have famous surname or you don't have. As long as you're a citizen, you should be respected as one and your rights has, have to be respected. As long as people are not educated, people are, are, are left behind, they do not understand the relationship between governors and their lives, they do not understand, they do not have political literacy, it's going to be a problem. If I take my country, for example, where you have a lot of people who have been deliberately marginalized in terms of access to education, and lack of that access to education means that more people are in poverty. I would love not to have a need to speak against injustice. 
I would love not to have a need to speak against tyranny or dictatorship or fight for anyone's right because everyone's right will be respected and there will be no tyranny. There will be good governance, accountability, transparency. The rule of law will be followed. There will be democracy in the actual sense of democracy. It has to be done. And uh, it, it's a fight that one has to fight, must always be rule of law. Nobody is above the rule of law. And government must understand that they get their power from the people and they too are subjected to that rule of law. In terms of democracy, we have to understand that people are more aware. It's no longer only government controlling information and putting the narrative out there. Social media has democratized media. And so more people own their voices, more people have their voices, more people can speak out. I'm optimistic. I meet a lot of people who are so scared on my behalf. And one of the things I always say uh, to, to people is that, look, we are all victims waiting to happen. In Nigeria, being a victim is no longer a matter of if, it is a matter of when. I would rather stand out there speaking my truth, fighting against injustice, fighting against tyranny, fighting against dictatorship. It doesn't matter whether you live to be 100 or you live to, uh, to just be 20. At the end of the day, it's all about what impact have we made. I we continue to speak against injustice no matter how uh, difficult it is, no matter how painful uh, uh, it is. Because to, to be silent and afraid of speaking the truth and speaking against injustice just because we are afraid to die will actually be death itself.